Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm the Math Advisor for Texas Instruments. This video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to be taking a look at using the TI-84 to work with a family of functions. The example we'll use comes from uh, the 2019 BC problem number 5. Uh, and This was a rational function, uh, 1 over the quantity x squared minus 2x plus k, where k is a constant that we'll get to uh, change as a parameter and look at different members of the family. Alright, I've entered that as my y1 and we're going to take a look at starting out with the value 1 being stored for k. That's going to give us a particular member of the family. Uh, let me go ahead and set up a zoom decimal window and here's a graph of that function where k is equal to 1. See there's a vertical asymptote right there at x equal 1. Uh, if we go back to our y equals menu and think about the symbolic form, when k is equal to 1, that denominator is actually a perfect square. It's the quantity x minus 1 quantity squared, which would result in that x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now this problem appeared on the non-calculator part of the exam. And one of the questions asks, what value of k would result in a tangent line of slope 6 at x equals 0? Now if I've worked that out by hand, I came up with 1 over the square root of 3 as the positive value of k that would satisfy that condition. But I'd like to check and see if that actually looks like it makes sense. So I've gone to the calculator screen and stored that value of k, regraphed, I've got a new member of the family, and I'm interested in the slope at x equals 0. So I'm going to go to the calculate screen, and my slope would be given by the derivative, but this will be a numerical derivative. And I come back to the graph screen and now if we enter uh, we get our dy dx is 6.0000512. It's very close. Remember it's a numerical derivative. Uh, but that's at least giving me a good evidence that I was on the right track with my value. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, it's a new member of the family that's determined by the value negative 8 in for that parameter k. Let's go ahead and regraph. Okay, we've got a new graph. Uh, this one has a vertical asymptote at x equal negative 2 and x equal 4. Uh, we're interested in this part of the problem, uh, what the value of the integral is between 0 and 1. So I'll go back to my calculation screen and pull up an, an integral and then we'll just need to fill it in this nice little template lower limit of integration 0 upper limit of integration 1 and then we'll pull y1 off of our y variables menu that's our integran and finally we'll enter the variable of integration x and then see what kind of value we get and that looks like it makes sense from the graph. It's a small magnitude negative number. Actually, let's return to the graph and take a look. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Between 0 and 1, we should get a small magnitude negative number. I want to point out we could calculate this directly on the graphing screen. If I go to the Calculate menu, number 7 is the definite integral. Asked prompts us for a lower limit. We're already at 0 and the upper limit. Let's march over to x equal 1, hit enter, and there's that value again. And notice it also shades in uh, the region uh, between the curve and the x-axis. Now the last part of this problem uh, actually asks us to consider another member of the family and someone that is determined by the value we first put in for k. That would be the value 1. So let me go ahead and enter that remind ourselves what the graph looks like. There's this single vertical asymptote at x equal 1. And this is asking us for an integral from 0 to 2 for this function. Notice it has a vertical asymptote in the middle of the interval, which is going to require us to split that interval into two pieces, from 0 to 1 and 1 to 2, so that the vertical asymptote is at one of the endpoints. Let's look at the interval from 0 to 1. So I'm setting up an integral from 0 to 1. Uh, we've got a new member 
of the family uh, functions determined by y1. We changed our value of k. So uh, I've got my integrand y1. Let's put in the variable of integration x. And what happens? Ah, okay, this is uh, what could happen with an improper integral. We have a division by 0. Uh, that makes sense at that um, limit of 1. I'm going to copy the integral over again, and I'm going to uh, replace 1 by a number just slightly less than 1. How about 0 0.999? Let's get, get some numerical evidence of what's going on. Ah, and we get a very large number for a result. Now this is not at all proof. You'd want to do this with limits on the exam, but at least giving you some numerical evidence that that improper integral is diverging. And if either of the improper integrals from 0 to 1 or 1 to 2 diverges, the entire improper integral diverges. Well, that winds up this video. For more resources like these, see education.ti.com.